Hi, welcome to Dialed In. I'm Alex Colon, this is Sasha Segan, and this is PC Mag's show all about mobile phones and technology. Now today we're going to talk about some pre-CES rumors. Uh, we're gonna talk about some, some other big companies that we might start seeing uh, come to the US. Uh, and we are going to show you one of the phones that we have been testing. It is the Huawei Honor 7X. Now, if you want to see that, you're going to have to stick around until the end of the show, because first we are going to start with rumors. Now, if you're watching this live on Facebook, feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. Uh, we'll read it out. We'll do our best to answer it. If you're watching this later on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, so let's just kick things off with the news. Um, yeah. And the first story, it's about Huawei and it's about Xiaomi. Now, these are two names that I think maybe outside of the US people are a lot more familiar with. Well, Huawei is the third biggest mobile phone company in the world right now. Right. They are absolutely huge. Outside the US, they are this powerful dominant force. Inside the US, it's like, Huawei? Uh, that's precisely. I mean, I, yeah. I've even spoken to people who are in the tech industry who are still like, we what? Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, Huawei, and um, we might actually be seeing some phones from them through carriers, it sounds now, like. Now, if you remember, actually years ago, uh, back when, uh, fun fact, we, we have both been here a very long time, Alex started out as a junior analyst in mobile phones years and years ago, and you were reviewing Huawei smartphones back then, right? right? except they weren't actually branded Huawei, it was usually like the T-Mobile something. Like they, they made like the T-Mobile house brand. Or, right, right, yeah. and that was like seven years ago or something yeah, like that. 2010. Yeah, back mm -hmm. then, back then. So Huawei was in uh, Huawei was in the US before right. and they had smartphones here before and then what happened was in 2013 uh, Congress basically declared them to be an enemy of the state. Um, Congress put out this report which said that both Huawei and ZTE but mostly Huawei were uh, probably spying on us for the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, they said that no US company should buy Huawei network equipment and kind of put a chill on Huawei's whole business here. So is this just something they said or was there a penalty in doing it? I mean, why did the company, why, why did people stop, you know? Well, so, so I know that uh, uh, ZTE was actually penalized and, and their phones were barred from import for a while okay. before they straightened it all out. Right. That was actually something involving Iran and it was this whole complicated international incident. Right. Um, but with Huawei, um, I think it is just that uh, the wireless carriers didn't want, they didn't want trouble. Mm -hmm. They didn't want, there was no formal ban. Right. The wireless carriers were like, you know what, there's a lot of other options out there that won't get us in trouble with the, with Congress. Right. So we'll go with one of the less troublesome troublesome firms. And so uh, and so after that, after 2013, Huawei kind of found the doors of US carriers closed to them. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like finally, according to Bloomberg, according to the AP, Huawei is finally coming back. And that what we're going to see, uh, possibly at CES, is uh, the Huawei Mate 10 or Mate 10 Pro being launched on AT&T. Okay, so AT&T would be the exclusive carrier for the phone. Yeah, AT&T would be the exclusive carrier from the phone. And now, uh, now also in these stories, in these, in this, these Bloomberg and uh, AP stories, mm -hmm. Um, they're also talking about Xiaomi, mm -hmm. and Xiaomi is is interesting. They make uh, relatively high quality, relatively low priced phones. Very popular in China and India, mm -hmm. um, but their uh, prospects are hazy in the U.S. They've never had a phone in the U.S. Yeah. at all. Period, and that is because uh, Xiaomi is considered to have uh, what is cons what what is called uh, dangerous IP exposure. And what is that? And that means that they are probably not paying for all the patents they're using. Okay. And so no one's 100% sure of this because they exist primarily in countries where the patent litigation is not as strong as in the US. But there, there is a continued speculation that if they enter the US, uh, uh, companies like Qualcomm and, uh, and uh, Apple right. and uh, you know, Lenovo owning Motorola, which owns a lot of old patents, uh, will just like come down on them like a hammer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the speculation for Xiaomi entering the US, I think that's a little more distant than Huawei. I think we're gonna see these Huawei phones, mm -hmm. but I think Xiaomi is gonna be more hesitant because they are afraid of this legal exposure. So let me ask you this though, um, if Huawei does indeed launch a phone and it's only on AT&T, I feel like these carrier specific one-offs, 
we often see them, even from bigger manufacturers, they kind of tend to fizzle and die. Yeah, I mean, and AT&T has taken this, uh, AT&T has taken a uh, chance on oddball phones mm -hmm. many times. I mean, the ZTE Axon M right. is on AT&T. Uh, they had the Asus uh, pad phone, the phone pad. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, I mean, we can go all the way back to, you know, the, the HTC Facebook phone. Right. You know, AT&T, all the Windows phones, all those Windows phones that True. were exclusive to AT&T. And none of them ever seemed to really make a mark in the market. Right. Now, does that affect AT&T in any way? I mean, if they release a phone that no one buys? Um, I don't know. I mean, you would think that they they have to buy the phones. They hold the inventory, right. you know. Um, but I think that uh, AT and T operates at such a scale mm -hmm. that buying, you know, a couple of tens of thousands of Huawei phones doesn't really matter to right. them so much. Um, and so the one thing that I do like about this, aside from the fact that you know I, I am a bit wary of the one-off thing. Mm -hmm. um, Huawei does make really nice phones. We have reviewed a lot of their unlocked phones. Um, I feel like they put out a lot more phones than most manufacturers. Yeah. So there's a lot more happening there, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, I remember, so years and years and years ago, I remember visiting the Huawei headquarters. Mm -hmm. And this is long, this was 2011. So this is, this is six years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember being very, very impressed with their approach to refining their products. At the time, they were not known for high quality phones. Right. But they had very detailed plans of how very thoughtfully and stepwise they were gonna make everything a little better all the time. And you got the idea that this was a company that was focused on, uh, you know, crossing their T's and dotting their I's. Right. And I think you've seen it in the increase in quality of their products over time. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of keeping with Huawei, but I want to move on a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what do we think we will be seeing at CES? I mean, with Huawei and with other mobile manufacturers. Okay, so CES is coming uh, the second week of January. Mm -hmm. It is one of the big technology trade shows of the year. Um, it is not the biggest phone show. Right. The big phone show is going to be my World Congress at the end of February. Mm -hmm. um, but there are still always a couple of phone announcements at CES. Um, Huawei and its sub-brand Honor are busily having a whole bunch of press events. Um, so uh, Huawei President Richard Yu said there will be an announcement at CES about uh, the Mate 10, which will probably be that AT&T Mate 10 announcement. Right. Question is, will it be the Mate 10 or the Mate 10 Pro or both? I'm thinking probably the Pro. Um, there will probably be something from Sony Mobile. Mm -hmm. um, maybe something Xperia XZ2 related. I want to pull up on the big board here. This alleged render of the XZ2. And of course, the first thing you see is that Sony finally figured out about bezels. Um, but I, I do see that they are still retaining what seems to be the same Xperia shape. Yes, it is Xperia shaped, but they reduce the bezels. Right. And so that is that is the possible idea for the XE2. And then and the the um, the other thing that I think might be interesting about Sony is do you remember last year they announced that the uh, they announced that their phones would have a Snapdragon 835 right. before anyone else, mm -hmm. but then didn't release them until May? Mm -hmm. I think we might see that again. I think we might see them pre-announcing the XE2 with a Snapdragon 845 and then saying, oh, you're not going to see it until May or June. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting. And then uh, I also think at CES we're going to see, and I have no idea whether anyone cares about this, uh, the BlackBerry Motion, which is out in a couple of other countries. You can buy it if you're in Canada. You right. cannot buy it in the United States yet. Um, we'll see the BlackBerry Motion release for the United States. I actually just saw a touchscreen BlackBerry in the wild yesterday, which I haven't seen one in a which long one? time. Which one? Like a Z10 or something? Yeah. Wow. Right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, was, it was like seeing an exotic animal. Was it Android or was it like BlackBerry 10? Uh, I think it was Android. Okay, okay. So so, so it was like one of the DTEX. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw, let's see, I've seen a couple of key ones. I've seen a couple of key ones in the wild. Every once in a while, I see somebody just like clinging with like a claw-like hand to their BlackBerry Classic. <laughs> Right, because they can't give it up. I mean, what are they going to replace it with? Exactly. There's nothing like it in the universe. <laughs> so, so those are some those are some ideas of what might happen at CES. Now, the the well, what about LG? Yeah, what about LG? So LG in previous years, um, there was a couple of years they announced the G Flexes right. at CES. Um, and those were fun. The bendy phones. Yeah, the bendy phones, slightly bendy. Yeah. Um, and then 
now we're, we're all waiting on the LG G7. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the G6 has largely, I think, faded from the universe. Mm -hmm. The G7 should come. Um, we have not heard any evidence that LG is going to announce a major phone at CES. And I think some of that may be because LG is right now having some management changes. Mm -hmm. They just had a new head of their mobile division. Okay. And I think that may be delaying them at the moment. Right. So the, we're, we're, we're winding up for the potential for Mobile World Congress to be like this clash of the titans between the Samsung S9 and the LG G7. And it's, it's a good thing we're sending a lot of people to Mobile World Congress. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's move on to another big name, Samsung. Right. Uh, we're starting to get some Galaxy S9 rumors. Yes. So uh, various unreliable reports in the Korean press, uh, always a great way to start something, um, say that the S9 will be launched the day before Mobile, Mobile World Congress in February mm -hmm. in one of their traditional big MWC launches. Uh, but there might be a brief teaser at CES. So okay. what, what might happen is that the Samsung press conference at CES might be all about, I don't know, televisions or robot vacuums or like what doesn't Samsung make? That's true, yeah. You know, juicers. They could be a whole line of juicers. And then like this like five second teaser for the S9 announcement at Mobile World Congress. So it's like when you're going to go see uh, a Marvel movie and then at the end you get the, the teaser for whatever's coming next? Totally, the S9 is gonna be like the end credit scene of CES, okay? If you sit through all of CES, you get to see five seconds about the, the Galaxy S9. Hey, it's a good way to get people to go to your press conference. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, I know we absolutely have to send someone now in case somebody says something about the S9. Um, there will definitely be a Snapdragon 845 in that one. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some case render renders out there or potential cases right. that show that uh, the S9 will have a fingerprint sensor under the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, S9 will have a single camera. S9 Plus would have a dual camera. Um, otherwise, it'll look a lot like the S8, which is really gonna open up the question of what's new about the S9. What's gonna grab people about the S9? Right. Um, so, I mean, hopefully it's some sort of whiz -bang feature that's you know, completely hidden under the hood. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we're gonna all forget about Bixby, because, man. I think we have forgotten about Bixby. We have forgotten about Bixby, but I'm pretty sure Samsung has not <laughs> forgotten about Bixby. Um, are there any questions out there? Questions, comments, no? You all guys right. are just gonna keep on listening? Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, so there are- We got a lot of frowning faces when we're talking about the Blackberry. <laughs> people just don't like Blackberry? Or do people like Blackberry and they think I'm not showing enough respect to Blackberry? <laughs> I like, I, I, I'm very fond of all the, of all the people at BlackBerry, I just feel like, you know, I, 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 I just feel like it's, it is hard to, to give them massive respect when they seem to be unable to sell many phones. I don't know, I, I still think you in particular, you get excited for every new BlackBerry that comes in. I do, I do. Well, I'm kind of of an age, I'm of a generation. <laughs> where, you know, BlackBerry meant a lot to me. Right. You know, BlackBerry was, when I first came to this company, I was reviewing Blackberries. okay? Blackberries were like in my formative years. So I, st I hear BlackBerry and I'm still a little like, hey, you know. Okay. Um, all right, so let's, let's uh, move on to the product that uh, I brought up at the top of the show, the one that we just reviewed. Uh, and our analyst is uh, standing behind here, AJ Kumar. Lurking in the corner. Hey! Um, so this is the LG Honor G6. 7X. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Honor 7X, made by Huawei. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the phone? Sure. I mean, you can see like right away that the first big thing is that it's the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. So you actually have a 6-inch screen packed into about 5.5 inches of actual body. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that we, so this phone is $200. That's mm -hmm. not something that we often see at this price. Right, yeah. So like, I mean, it's a mid-range phone, so the best feature is the price, and that's $200. And that this is an unlocked phone, so you're looking at AT&T and T-Mobile. I used it on both. Um, but so the main thing really is the form factor. Uh, it's easy to use with one hand. I can reach completely mm -hmm. across and, um, you know, and it has a whole range of like one-handed UI modes. Um, Speaking of UI modes now, how mm -hmm. bad is that Huawei skin right okay. now? Okay, so uh, this is um, one of the newer versions of EMUI. This is the EMUI 5.1. It's still running Nougat, but um, it is a lot smoother than it used to be. I tested the 6X, uh, and um, before the old, uh, before the new update, 
it was a little bit laggy and now um, with the latest version uh, there's not too much animation lag. Mm -hmm. um, the settings menu can be a little bit overwhelming. There is a lot of features and modes packed in here. Um, but some of them are useful. Um, you know, there's a lot of battery saving modes, a lot of one-handed modes. Uh, so some of them are useful. Uh, you can restore the app drawer if you want. Uh, I have it on where it's just all the icons across the screens. Which is how it comes by default. Right, it comes I, by default. Or as I think of it, fake iPhone mode. Right. Fake iPhone mode. Yeah. Uh, but you can customize a lot of it. Uh, it is not as bad as it used to be. And a lot of the uh, bloatware apps I just deleted, and you can do that now, so, which is so, nice. So other weird specs on here that make mm -hmm. me curious. What's the deal with those rear cameras? So uh, you have a 16 megapixel primary camera and a two megapixel um, additional camera, and this is for bokeh and portrait oh, mode. Oh, okay. So it's just for it's just for depth, basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it does a kind of a fake uh, portrait mode where um, it adds a little depth to the shot. Uh, it is uh, it is similar to what the 6x had. But it also had two uh, rear cameras. Uh, mm -hmm. It a adds a little blur effect. Um, it's hit or miss sometimes, uh, it kind of misses the mark occasionally, but most of the time it looks pretty good. Uh, it's, the blur effect's a little bit more uniform than the 6X, so uh, it's an improvement there. Uh, mm -hmm. Low light, which is always kind of what mid-range phones um, struggle with, I'm, it's okay, again, but you're still gonna get some noise. Mm -hmm. Autofocus sometimes misses the mark. Uh, um, how about, uh, so what's the screen resolution, uh, the other basic specs here? Uh, basic specs, so uh, you're looking at, it's a 1080p screen, uh, okay. but the aspect ratio is 18 by 9. Mm -hmm. So uh, some apps are optimized for full screen mode. Uh, others, you'll get letterboxing. You mm -hmm. do have an option to force most apps. I can get GTA uh, San Andreas running mm -hmm. in more or less full screen. Aside What's the screens. processor? Uh, this is a Kirin 659 processor. So can that run GTA San Andreas uh, decently? It can. I did get one crash, uh, mm -hmm. and that seems to be a RAM. So it has 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the only option you can get in the US. Uh, internationally, you can get 4 gigs and mm -hmm. 64 or 128. Uh, so, uh, but aside from like a minor crash, the game runs fairly smoothly. It's about on par with the G5 Plus, mm -hmm. so um, which is like also a solid mid-range processor. And the Moto G5 Plus is our that's our pick mm -hmm. at this price level, right? Right. That is our current editor's choice. Uh, if you uh, prefer the traditional uh, form factor, also. Um, so with battery life, I should mention that. Uh, so it's a 3340 milliamp battery. Which sounds pretty good. It's uh, pretty good, uh, but the added, um, there's like, I believe about like 13 or 15% more screen real estate. Mm -hmm. And so that will take you down to five hours, 11 minutes of screen on time during mm -hmm. our battery test, which is a uh, streaming video over LT. Okay, and so that's less than the G5 that Plus. Is, that two is two hours less. That is two uh, hours less. So the G5 Plus is seven hours, 35 minutes. And the G5 Plus will also work on all the U.S. carriers, mm -hmm. not just AT&T mm -hmm. and T-Mobile. Right, it has bands for all the U.S. carriers, including Verizon and Sprint, and this is only AT&T and T-Mobile. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, any questions out there? No? Okay, so um, so when is the when is the review for this guy going up? It should be going up at any moment now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just put the finishing touches on it. And 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 you consider it a good choice for people who uh, a good choice for people who are on a budget. Yeah, it's a great choice for people who are on a budget. It's uh, two hundred dollars, and basically, if you like the eighteen by nine form factor, if you like the look of it, if you like uh, the way the screen is. Um, it's a good alternative to the G5 Plus. The G5 Plus is still our editor's choice because better carrier support, a cleaner software, mm -hmm. and a uh, longer battery. But this is a great option uh, and generally a nice phone. Yeah, if you're looking to spend $200 and you want this form factor, mm -hmm. this is basically the phone to get. Right. Okay, great. Uh, all right, well, thanks for tuning in to Dialed In. Uh, we will be back again after the holidays. And uh, well, we'll probably have a, a bunch of new phones to talk about after CES. Yeah, so absolutely. lots of cool stuff on the horizon. So check back soon.